Hello, everybody. So we have a lot of posts from today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hold like a daily session with everybody where we're going to look through all the shots. We're going to talk about each one. Uh, I'm going to go through them alphabetically and just kind of take a look at I think there's like 11 different posts today. But the thing that's really nice about this is you can kind of see which each other is working on. Um, you get a better understanding of uh, just lighting as a whole and and uh, just get a better feel of the type of notes that you would get not only on the shots that you're working on, but on other shots too. So uh, this is something that, uh, yeah, I found really beneficial when I was first getting started in the industry. I learned, I would say most of what I know about lighting, not from lighting my own shots, but from uh, sitting in on, on reviews of other people's work as well. So uh, I hope you guys find this beneficial and uh, all right, let's get started. So first up, uh, we have uh, Cho. And, uh, and by the way, if I'm mispronouncing anyone's names, please, please, please correct me in the comments down below this post. I will, I want to know your guys' names. I want to be able to say them properly. So please let me know if I'm mispronouncing anyone. Okay. So the, the thing that we were working on, uh, last and the thing that we're trying to tackle is getting, uh, some key light here on the foot. So what I'm seeing is there's a pool of light down here at the bottom. There is a full shadow here. Like we're not seeing any shadow in this area. But what I'm not seeing is this key light hitting the top of the foot here. So I would really, really like to see that. Maybe a little bit on this foot too, maybe a little bit on the leg, but definitely something here to help tie this all together. Because now when you kind of look at it, it feels a little disjointed and it feels a little bit separated. So we really, really, really want to get uh, some key light there on, there on the foot. The other thing you want to watch out for is the amount of noise um, and like kind of speckliness in the in the shadows here you really want to make sure that you're increasing those sample sizes so that's a nice smooth shape um, it may not it's not that big of a deal for a still but for an animated shot it starts to get super flickery because it changes where it's grainy on different pixels and it just it just chatters or it's noisy or you hear many many different terms for that the other thing i would do to adjust this one is um, just to help it read a little bit better i would go ahead and darken this eye let me go ahead and erase some of the area around it. And there we go. And I would just kind of darken that down a little bit to really make that eye pop and, and read off a little better in the shadow areas. But I think that you're off to a good start. I think this is um, this is really, really nice. And just ma also make sure that you have a little, maybe a little bit more radius on your key light to make sure to soften this shadow up a little bit. And I know you were saying that this shadow felt a little distracting. It might be a little bit too sharp on the sharp side too. So uh, just kind of increasing the radius ought to help that as well. So Kleber, I know you're getting uh, some feedback from um, Francesco, who's a the lighting lead at DreamWorks, who's a good friend of ours, um, who's a brilliant, brilliant lighter. Uh, so I uh, just kind of want to reiterate some of that stuff. So he had a really great point about the idea of, and this, and I know that that we want to create the dark shapes on the character to get her to pop, but he's right. Like we're looking directly into this light source um, that would create some wash on the frame. So yeah, maybe, maybe just not a super crisp blacks on this, a little bit of extra wash there. This light here is looking really nice. Uh, this one I think we can get in a better place. It's just too hard around the edges, uh, just kind of softening, softening that and basically just kind of making it look like that one because I think that that looks really nice. Uh, the other note that Francesco gave, which is great, is just making sure that this lines up underneath this and that there's a little bit of a brighter central core to, because it's essentially a reflection of that. Um, I think you can go darker on the back of her neck here. This is still feeling a little bit glowy and it's a little bit saturated in some places, so I would pull that back a little bit. But you're coming along really, really nicely on this. I think this is looking really well and um, you should be happy with the progress that you're making. And the other thing would be if you could just any chance you can get to create a little more separation in this background um, uh, would, would be helpful. Like anything between like these buildings over here on the screen left side, just to create a little bit more stepping back in space would be would be great. Uh, but, but this is looking really, really nice overall. So Dana, okay, so we've got two submissions from you. We'll start with this one. Looking really great. Um, we're getting still some hard shadows in here. Maybe soften those up a little bit. Um, these lights are are looking pretty good. Like this one looks good. I like that central core. These, um, I almost want to pull the bright spot back closer to the base of the light. It feels a little strange that they're at the tip because usually the filament's closer to the base of the light. Um, I like that you're getting some 
uh, magentas here on these characters. Would like to see a little bit of rim back here, maybe here and here on them. Just like a little touch. Watch out, we're still getting some blue lines back there. I'm not quite sure what those are coming from, but um, just be aware of that. And the final major note that I would like to, to give you is just looking at this, like the concentration of these shapes is a little bit too much. Like there's more of these reflected shapes than there are shapes up here. Like there would be kind of a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, but the one thing you really want to do is uh, scale them up as we're going out this way. So as the distance, like the distance between here and here is pretty short, so the, the shape would be smaller, but the distance between like this one and all the way out here would be bigger so that the, the scale of the reflection would get a little bit bigger as well. Um, so just scale that up a little bit and then decrease the just like f total number of squares there are because this is, this is just um, a lot compared to what we're seeing on the, the, the sphere itself, on the disco ball itself. Uh, but yeah, I think overall that's looking great. The only other thing too, and this is kind of similar to what we were talking about with uh, Clever Shot, but um, we're looking directly in these lights. There's some haze. I would almost want to see just like a touch more darkness in some of the dark values. Um, let's see what will happen if we push that up. Eh, that's a little too much. But um, just a little bit of darkness in the dark values to kind of help balance this out, I think would work, work really well. Um, okay, and then, oh, and then your city. Okay, looking good. You're off to a good start. Like technically you're, you're doing some, some good stuff. Um, there are a few issues, like one is this back plate, so it's just super out of focus back there, and that's not really what we want uh, when we're dealing with large-scale environment lighting because usually it's like macro photography that gets pretty heavy depth of field, uh, and the larger the space is, the less you're going to see. So you'd almost see like zero depth of field on the depth of field blur on this. Everything would pretty much be crisp. Um, so make sure you're not having too many issues with that. This um, sunlight could be sunnier on the the set. It's also like we're getting into, um, this is just kind of flat in there by this Big Ben type clock and some of these areas back there. Um, but like overall, you're getting some shaping. That's really cool. But the two things I would really, really have you work on are uh, figuring out, uh, dive down a little deeper into the mood that you want to create. Um, figure out if like, like so we're looking down the street. Um, we've got this federal looking building here. Like, did you just get elected to office? Are you very excited? Is that a happy place that you want to go to? Or is it, uh, are you being charged with a crime that you're not guilty of and you're being taken to court on, on some trumped up charges? You know what I mean? Like, let's, I, I'm not, I'm feeling pretty neutral about this set. It just feels like a time of day. You know what I mean? Like, let's really, really amp up the emotion of this and try and, try and create a, a little bit more story here. The other thing is, um, like I mentioned that like this federal building back here, I think what we can um, I think we can push the focus too. like where do we want the audience to look? If it's back here, you're kind of already setting up for that and that's really nice, which is allowing these buildings to go these hmm, these buildings to go into shadow over on the screen right side here, like these in shadow. Um, really hit this building a lot harder with some key light and then allow this, like this is nice shaping in here, um, just like little pockets of light on these buildings here. But really make sure that the light gets centered back in this region here. And then I'm not quite sure what's going on with the ground here. This looks very flat, like uh, it almost looks like tile. Maybe my read is just off on it, but I'm just not quite sure what's going on there. But yeah, good start. I just uh, think we can really amp up the... Um, uh, emotional elements and the focal point. So, because you're always asking yourself those three whys of lighting, uh, directing the viewer's eye, shaping, and and creating the mood. Holly, making great progress on this one. Um, a couple things that I, I would do. The biggest one is that this light coming out of here is just too saturated. It's like super yellow orange. Um, so I would I would take that saturation. Now it's not really going to work here in. Um, in Photoshop, I take the sound, it's just going to look kind of gray. Um, but you're going to want less saturation coming out of there because it's just because it's got so saturated that it's pretty much just like a pure color. And when I take the saturation out, it just like there's nowhere for the pure, like the color to go other than just kind of a flat gray. So I would just take that down. Um, also, in here, like especially this right there, you could take down the blue saturation, um, I think, to about like that level. And you can still sell it, but like without it being that kind of electric blue. Um, so I would do that. 
I would also get a little bit of light up underneath here. Uh, the same way that you're getting light up underneath here. Watch out for this bright edge, but just some like soft fill and to create some shaping there. And then a little bit of light in this background here as well. I'm sorry, back behind this. Just a touch, not, not very much at all. I wanna keep that kind of dark, but just to kind of sell the space back there. Um, but all in all, like you're centering this up nicely. This is all coming in, in well. I just think that we can like, if we just kind of um, adjust the colors just a little bit um, to kind of make that fall in a space just a little bit more, um, I think that would make a big difference too. But yeah, just watch out for the saturation on the blues, the saturation on the yellows. Um, I like the rim light on her. Her back could get a little bit darker, but overall her shaping's doing very well. Um, so that's where I would end with that one. All right, Mauro, very cool stuff. Like the breakdown here of the, uh, of we got, you know, Wes Anderson's one of my favorite directors. Um, he's the director I thought I was working for when I got my first job at Blue Sky because I had read and saw an online article that Fox Animation uh, was working on the Fantastic Mr. Fox and they actually specifically said Blue Sky Studios and then I got the job offer at Blue Sky and I was like, yay, I'm going to be working on a Wes Anderson film of a Roald Dahl book. It's a dream come true. And then I found out that that article was wrong and that they were producing that somewhere else. Um, so I was a little bummed, but I was still uh, it's still good because this because Wes Anderson uh, just creates some beautiful imagery, like super symmetric stuff, as we all know. Uh, I love your breakdown of this Z shape going up to um, up to the building, this blue line kind of showing this this kind of leading eye line uh, going up to the building. Uh, I also really love the color scheme of this overall. It's just like a lot of pinks and uh, warm rosy colors, except for the door of the building and then some of the, the roof shapes to really help that this pop off. We've got some aerial perspective, atmospheric fall off, atmospheric scatter of the darker colors up front and then falling back in a space there. But I love the whimsy of it. I love the symmetrical design from left to right, but also it's not balanced. Like we're not like if it was if it was perfectly balanced, this would be kind of here in the middle. And I know we're kind of following this up up the track a little bit, but um, it's not a perfectly balanced. So you know, like something's a little bit whimsical. And it's it's just a really really fun design. Thank you so much for sharing. These are great. I love talking about these. Okay, and moving on, we've got Shibley here with a couple posts. Uh, so with this one, the thing I was talking about in the comments was just like this amount of glow up underneath the feet. I'm not quite sure where that's coming from. Um, because it doesn't, it doesn't really connect to the space. We've got this very cool surrounding and, and like cool blue tones. So having this very saturated red light coming up from underneath, I'm not quite sure um, how to balance that. So uh, I was just hoping that and it's also like getting a little bit too filled in overall. So I just kind of want to see where we are with just the key light and maybe just like the skylight or fill light without without any of these secondary lights coming in. Because I think I think the overall shaping might be in a better spot without it. Because um, yeah, it's just it's just throwing off our read a little bit. And then on this one, I think this is looking really good. I think that you've got a nice gradient going on the background. Um, this specular highlight is getting a little bit too bright. These eyes, if we can um, uh, adjust the materials on the eyes because right now they're just like black marbles, like they're super duper black. And we're not seeing any uh, separation between the iris and the pupil. Um, I would work on that and then uh, just watch out for this little extra. I would just take out that uh, specular highlight there. Um, and love the specularity on the lips. think that's working really well, getting some good bump on the skin. Um, I really like that you're getting this kind of kick light in here. Um, I think that's working well. I would also just like to see a little bit more uh, bounce up underneath the chin just to kind of, because it's getting a little bit dark under there, um, just a little bit to fill that in. Uh, but overall, I think that's looking pretty well. Look at the framing on this. Yeah, I guess it's working. Her ears always feel like super small to me. I don't know what that is. But yeah, I don't know. Nothing you can change about that. But that's just, just my thought. Okay, so Sylvain, we've got a couple images from your animation. And uh, just looking through all your different reference, there's a couple things that are really standing out. Uh, number one is just super soft light. Uh, not a lot of hard shadows, lots of softness, lots of um, just like an overall glow as opposed to like feeling like there's a hard light like this one. And then and then the other is just like balancing between this these warm and cool values. So cool background, warm character, um, 
let's go back here. So like again, uh, warmth uh, against the cool, warmth against the cool, warmth against the cool. Um, so really kind of hitting on those two points. So looking back at yours, we, the lighting is a little bit um, more harsh. You're getting this warm versus cool thing, but the, the lighting itself on the characters is a little bit, um, uh, it, feels, it feels like the radius of the light is a little bit small. The specularity is pretty high. Um, you've seen down in there, seen some very crisp shadows uh, on these darts. So I would just kind of work on softening that overall and then um, and really allowing um, the warmth of this light to just kind of feel more glowy than it, than a direct like heart. It, like it looks like they're standing right next to like the headlamp of a car. It feels very bright. Um, for these eye dings, I would, I would still put them up top. I know it's it's not exactly intuitive to the space, but um, uh, I would just just kind of get those to line up a, a little bit in that same like two o'clock position. Anything coming from underneath and it just it just feels a little bit off. You asked a great question about how to handle eye dings on animated characters, and and Francesco and I are are totally in lockstep that you want to keep them pretty static until a character blinks or moves very quickly, and you can hide the animation of of the ding light in there. Um, you know, you can either use an actual light source or reflection in the scene, or you can um, use uh, XY maps in the or normals or something in the in the comp and and add them in a two D thing. That can be a little easier to control. We did that. A, I've done that a lot in films. Um, if you ever watched the Peanuts movie, just for a second, pay attention to the eye dings. They never ever leave the perfect position. We had to hand animate those so 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 much. I, that was half of my life. For that year and a half was just animating eye dings on that movie um but yeah uh just just creating a little more shaping on this and then and the more shaping in the background too i think like if we look at this reference uh we can see some light to dark or fall off areas um just like a little bit more pockets of light back in here um just just some more variation versus here which is like looking pretty flat so just find a reason to create a little more shaping maybe this window light is creeping in against this back wall a little bit more and just some light to dark fall off there but uh, yeah, again, overall, it's looking great. And watch out for these. These guys are popping out just a little bit there. All right, next up, we've got uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, the scene. So it's funny that you use this reference. Um, I was just talking about this sequence um, and this film uh, to some colleagues. And, and basically, I was looking at this and thinking, man, this is just like super softness. They're using a lot of cooler tones because that um, emphasizes... Uh, Officer Hops is cool. Her, her fur is very cool on the rabbit here. Um, but if you look at, at just this uh, this assistant mayor character whose name I forget, um, you're seeing a lot of softness, right? Not a lot of hard shadows. Again, just variation. Like this is the hardest that a shadow will get is right across there on her head. Um, but if we look at this render here, we're seeing a lot of hard shadows like that. I'm seeing this on the neck here. Um, and we're seeing a lot of like very bright areas, like right around, oop, right around here. And then, it, but it, like looking at the ref, like we never, ever see that kind of super brightness. Um, the other thing that we're seeing is, uh, so while I like that you're going for variation in this particular case with this reference, we just kind of want to, uh, tone that down a little bit. And I would go ahead and swap out their, uh, if you, their garments in this to, to kind of match the, the reference if you can. Just like shift the, the color on the material there. Uh, that'll help line that up. And then background's still looking a little bit too too saturated blue overall like, compared to this because everything on this is like, you know, just, just kind of just A being back and forth. This is just like very desaturated versus the saturation, like especially in the reds. Like if I just took this and pulled, oh, this. Oh, preview, that's why. And pull this down. Just kind of overall, we'll, we'll be falling into a better better saturation point. And even then, this red is super saturated. Let me go pull that back. Kind of adjust these individually. So this reds can come way down. And then um, the blues can come down too. And now it's, it's uh, I went a little bit extreme with it, but you can see it's a little bit better. But then the other thing that I would do and I know that if you if you watch a lot of my critiques in the past, you've seen this technique. You can do this in Photoshop. You can do this in um, Nuke. But basically, you want to take the entire image. Um, you can see it's layered over top of itself. Then you want to blur it up a little bit. We just do like eight pixels is fine here. 
Um, and then you wanna screen it back on top of itself. I know we show this in some demos. Bring this down a little bit. And usually we kind of isolate it to some highlights. But if you look, this against the original, you can see a lot more glowiness, and now it's kind of matching up to the reference a little bit. It's a little heavy-handed, but um, you get the idea that, because like this is kind of diffusing the edges a little bit, kind of taking away those that hardness. Uh, but I would really pay attention to the saturation and the softness of this when, when going after yours. Um, okay, so now I want to hop over into some uh, some stuff on the, the, the Facebook page. Okay, so first up we've got Mindy. Uh, and her, this is really, really great lighting, uh, great start, your, your head's in the right place, you're looking at all the right things, you're doing all the right stuff. Um, and uh, you know, you, you're know you getting these bright values versus the floor, let's go back and forth, like you're getting this blue outside the window and the reflection, all really, really good stuff. Um, I think that behind them can go a little bit brighter, actually this isn't your final, really your most updated one, eh, although this one had the bad color management. Um, yeah, so I, I think, but overall, your head's in the right place, you're looking at the right stuff, you're seeing the right things. Um, just It would just be a matter of getting used to doing some tweaks of, uh, of, 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 of hitting some notes. Um, but the reason why I wanted to bring this up, because I know we covered all that, um, was just to let you know that, the, that color management is a huge pain in the butt. Um, I am still, um, oh, look at this, you did respond. Uh, I did notice that lowering the gamma did create a similar image, but I think I read something about, yeah. Um, Color management is totally confusing. It's still confusing to me. I've been working in the industry for over 11, 12 years now, 12 years, I can't remember. But I've been trying very hard to get a better grasp of it and I am just not there yet. Um, so don't beat yourself up, don't feel bad about it. It's totally, totally fine. That's all I wanted to say about that. Um, and then we've got Donica's here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, this is, a long, uh, this is a long shot. Just realizing this is like 30 seconds. That's long for an animation. Okay, so some things to talk about here. You're getting good shaping on this guy. He might be, it's, again, just keep trying to soften that just a little bit if you can, but it's looking really good. The value is just about right. Um, watch out for this highlight on this monitor here. Um, I don't know what it is about it. Just look at some like laptop glares because it doesn't quite feel like a laptop glare to me. Um, and then just, just maybe try and dial that in. These lights back here can get just a touch lighter. I know we were working on getting shaping on this character. It's working pretty well. I think we can go a little bit darker in the darks. Watch out for her badge. It's very, very bright. Um, it, the, the whites are very, very uh, white. What I'm looking for in the shaping is just just getting some more variation across the, the shirt, like from the screen, like from the left shoulder to the right shoulder, just feeling a little bit more of that variation in there. Um, but just keep pushing that. And then the last thing is to watch out for, let's see if I can get it, super bright teeth. And her um, her irises are very glowy, so I would just like make sure you pull back on the, either. The nice thing is, is that it's actually nice that the irises are very bright throughout the entire shot because you can actually go into the material and tone those down that way, as opposed to like you know it's harder when it's like some frames are bright and some frames they look fine. So um, you can really pull that back. But this is coming together really nicely, and you're very very close. And soon we'll be able to render it full res in all its glory, um, and you should be in a good spot there. So if anybody has any questions, just let me know and I'll be happy to take a look. Um, but keep going, guys. Keep posting your work. I'm loving this. This is so exciting to me. Um, I would love to do this more often. Uh, but unfortunately, during COVID times, I have a, a little gremlin running around my apartment and a wife who uh, still is working in the emergency room here in New York. Um, and so not much opportunity uh, to sit down for long stretches of time with my computer and talk without interruption. So uh, thank you guys very much. And uh, like I said, keep posting your work and I can't wait to see what you do next. All right. Happy lighting, everyone.